So continuing on with the development of the CAT scanner conversion of the Faxtron X-ray machine, uh, one of the things that we're going to need to do is to integrate an automated uh, rotational stage assembly into the uh, X-ray cabinet in order to rotate the object which is being scanned. Um, there's several uh, possibilities to do this. One is with a stepper motor with a right angle gearbox. The other is with just the stepper motor itself. The right angle gearbox is obviously going to have a lot more uh, physical capacity to scan uh, larger objects and also potentially a finer resolution, whereas the single stepper itself will be smaller. So to drive the stepper, I've come up with um, an architecture that uses the, uh, the Palalu uh, TIC T825 uh, uh, stepper controller. It's a small USB based board. Um, Integrated onto the board, there is a two-phase stepper driver for a bipolar stepper motor. However, for this particular stage that I'm testing right here, this has a five-phase motor. So to, to run that motor, I'm going to need its own independent driver. And uh, so this was a motor by uh, Vexta, and Vexta is pretty much the only manufacturer of, well, at least the most common manufacturer of uh, five-phase steppers. So they also have stepper drivers, so this is a Vexta Nano Step 5 phase driver. Uh, the Plalu uh, TIC controller does have step and direction line outputs. So these step and direction line outputs are just going to the Nano Step driver. So that's basically the, the board just has its own two phase driver on there, but it's not being utilized when driving this particular stage. So the 5 phase uh, driver is then just put onto the stage itself. Now uh, here's the TIC controller, so there's the uh, header on this side for power in, which requires uh, 8.5 to 45 volts to drive the step controller, and then it also has the outputs to the two-phase motors if you're using a two-phase system. Then the step and direction outputs are at the top, and then you have inputs for remote stepper control if you wanted to use a uh, RC servo input or a TTL serial or I squared C or analog input, and then it also has the USB interface, which you can drive via, uh, the stepper controller via a computer. So, Palalu does have its own control app. So with this, we can control the stepper stage. I'm going to put a, a switch on top of this stage so you can see it rotate. So with this, you can command the stage to go to various positions and rotate. However, for the CAT scan, we're going to need to integrate this all to one software package. So uh, the uh, Palalu also does come with a command line interface, which is uh, TIC uh, CMD. Um, you can access this over command line, or if you're using uh, MATLAB as a, a development environment, which I am, MATLAB does allow you to send um, commands directly to the command line. So for that, I have uh, written a script to test the, uh, the TIC controller with the command line interface. And this is just going to take uh, 24 steps over a full rotation. So when we start this, it's stepping in um, 5 degree increments. So it's going to have, um, it's going to take 5 degree increments uh, three, over a 360 degree rotation. And it's going to have some pause time between steps in the CAT scan application. That would be the dwell time at each position for the X-ray system to X-ray the object. So it'll rotate, X-ray, rotate, X-ray, rotate, X-ray over the uh, full rota rotation. So the next step for that is to integrate that into uh, the X-ray cabinet. So for the X-ray cabinet, I actually have I'll configure that with a single stepper motor, as we can see uh, here. So there is, let me see if we can get this uh, in a little closer. Apparently not. Um, so. so here's another Plalo tick driver. and it runs the wires in 
around the labyrinth uh, seal. So with the x-ray shield, it has an x-ray shielding door. And of course, it has a door interlock. So it will not activate the x-ray generator unless the door is closed. Of course, that should never be uh, bypassed for safety reasons. And the stepper, con mounter, uh, stepper control is actually mounted on a right angle bracket here. And there's a part of a switch, which is just mounted over the x-ray detector, which it can rotate. And the wires, they're, because this is a reentrant seal, basically just has a, a U-shaped a channel for the shield to move in. The wires are actually thin enough to just snake under that shield. Now, if you wanted to put other things into the x-ray cabinet, you could also do so with a flat flex cable. So if you take a flex, uh, flat flex cable with a breakout board, you can also thread that easily in uh, through the shielding assembly. And you can also buy flat flex cable uh, USB adapters on Amazon. So if you wanted to run a USB connection into the cabinet, you could also do the same thing. And these will just snake right under the shield. It doesn't require any modification of the system. There's about, about a sixteenth uh, of an inch gap under the sliding shield part. So these cables are only maybe four thousandths of an inch thick or thereabouts. So those will easily fit in. So now, running this same test with um, it's going to require some reconfiguration, reconfiguration of the motor, but there with the, with the same test we can see that it's activated. It'll do the same thing and it'll take a 360 degree steps. And if this this is just with a test of the stepper motor, it's not actually X-raying anything at the time. But if this was X-raying the x-ray beam would come down from the top, it's a cone beam, and it would be x-ray the object, which would then be detected on the uh, Hamamatsu flat panel detector, which is in the bottom. And then this would store the data in between steps. And then later on reconstruct the CAT scan. So in another video I'll show how um, that and the flat panel sensor software interface works.